Hey guys, I'm Mr. Token and welcome to another episode of All the Mods 8. In the last episode, we talked about getting lithium by making brine and turning that brine into lithium. And we're going to actually use that lithium today, and we're going to be making ourselves a fusion reactor. Now, there's also an SPS that we're going to get to, but this fusion reactor is actually going to take some time. So I might do the SPS in the next episode. So a couple episodes ago, I actually ended up making a fission reactor and in turn getting nuclear waste so I can get some polonium pellets. Well, funny enough, to make a fusion reactor, we're going to actually need some of those polonium pellets because we're going to need fusion reactor frames. And to make those, we need the polonium pellets with the atomic alloy and steel casing. So. We're going to go ahead and make a few of those. Luckily for me, I actually ended up putting it into my crafter. So I can just craft those right back up. And then we're also going to need reactor glass. I'm pretty sure I have some of that left over from my fission reactor. And we're also going to need three fusion reactor ports. Um, two of them is for fuel. And the third one is to output the energy necessary. And then we're also going to need this fusion reactor controller, which is used for interacting with the fusion reactor our fusion reactor ports are actually made with the fusion reactor frames and in the center a ultimate control circuit and our fusion reactor controller is also a fusion reactor frame with a basic chemical tank two ultimate control circuits and a glass pane okay so we have our fusion reactor frames which is good. And then we also have six fusion reactor port. I actually only need five, but when I auto crafted it, it made an extra one, but that's okay. And we also have our fusion reactor controller. Now, another thing we're actually gonna need for this are lasers. So we're gonna be need the laser from mechanism. I'm gonna make a solid five of these lasers. You can make one, you can make two, you can make three, you can make four. It don't really matter. Um, I mean, it does matter. Like, the more you have, the faster it'll be. So if you want more to make it quicker, then make more. If you don't really care to wait that long, then just make one. But, uh, yeah. So we're gonna need... I'm gonna make five of these, and then we're also going to need this laser amplifier, which is pretty cool. You just need some steel ingots with a basic energy cube and a diamond. Um, and then I'm going to make that as well. And then you're also going to need the laser focus matrix. You only need one of these for some reason it makes two, but you only need one. Uh, you just use the reactor glass, uh, with a block of redstone. Pretty simple. So we got our laser, we got our building blocks. Um, the only thing left remaining is to making the proper fuel to actually get this thing started. So we're also going to need this, uh, Deutrium. I, I'm just ballparking. I have no idea how to say this. Deutrium. And uh, we'll need an electric pump for that uh, with a filter upgrade inside. Now I have five filters and five pumps and I'll explain to that once we actually get to building the thing uh, why I'm making so many pumps. Also to make deutrium we're gonna need an electrolytic separator. Now the other type of fuel that we're gonna need is tritium. And it's actually pretty basic. So what we're going to do is take the lithium that we made with the brine in the last episode. And we're going to put it into the solar neutron activator. So I'm going to go ahead and craft one of those up. Matter of fact, I don't even have to. I already have one. Sweet. Now we're also going to need a chemical infuser. Which we're going to take the two fuels and combine them into this machine to get DT fuel. And that is used to kickstart the actual fusion reactor but to even use the dt fuel we're gonna need a whole room which is actually pretty simple you just take coal and a gold dust and a metallurgic infuser and you get one and i'm just putting everything on autocraft just in case all right we have our whole room now i'm pretty sure i have everything that is necessary except for some tubes and pipes and cables and once we get all that uh we'll be good to go and we're back into the blue skies dimension and we're gonna put it in here because once again we have a solar neutron activator that we'll need to be constantly going so it's just best to do it in this dimension in my personal opinion now we have everything in hand to make the main structure so we're gonna go ahead and get started with that 
So we're going to put it in that kind of shape right there. And we're going to do that on all four sides with each side connecting just like that. So like this shape is also a part of this shape and we're going to do that on all four sides so i'm going to do that real quick and i'll be right back now we're also going to do the same thing on the top and bottom so just kind of put in the corners on the bottom here and i'm just going to go ahead and put some reactive glass you can also just put casings there if you want but i'm just putting the glass i'm putting the ports in like so at least two of them and then the third one i'm going to put off to the side here so I got four more casings to put in. You're also gonna need to put in your laser focus matrix. Don't forget about that. So before you do anything else, just make sure you do that. And then you can finish off the build to have a nice and complete build. <laughs> it got all glowy and whatnot, so you can interact with it. It could tell you. So we need uh, our dirtium, 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 dirtium and our true tr team true team true team true team what is it again yeah it's true team i was right i know how to words so one of the things that take the absolute longest is the laser the laser takes a really long time there's a lot you need 400 mfe per tick in order to actually get this thing boosted so uh we're gonna go ahead and put that together so with your laser focus matrix, you're going to need your laser amplifier and uh, it's directional placing. So put a block in the back of where you want it to face. So you want it to face towards there. So put a block behind where you were going to put it, place it on that block. Because if you place it on the block, so even if you're like this and you place it on this block, it's going to point up. So just make sure you place it on a block like that. It's Kind of annoying so another thing that you're going to want to do is set the redstone detection to normal on this laser amplifier and uh you just want it to supercharge you want it to charge up to 400 mfe per tick so make sure it's not blasting into this hole as you're putting the lasers down you want it to hold the charge first and then you let it go all right so i have all of my ultimate universal energy cables from mechanism going around like so you can take a look just make sure that your lasers are uh, at least a block away from the laser amplifier now I'm gonna take this I'm gonna mix power and mechanism here I'm gonna use this ender gate place it on the bottom there now that's gonna start filling up with energy so now we're gonna go ahead and start putting lasers in there's five so that laser is going into this laser amplifier and it's filling up. So the reason I did this first is like I said, look at that top left hand corner. Look how slowly it's going up. I mean, I'm not using the best form of energy currently, but I'm about to. So this is going to take a minute. So I just wanted to do that first and get it out of the way. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a line of water. Each make sure each one is a water source as well. And you're going to place your pumps down like so. I, like I said, I'm using five and I'm using five because I want this to be pretty dang powerful. And this is what I found how it, it keeps up pretty well, honestly. Keep in mind, if you have your inventory powered, don't place the water down first. Place the pumps down because then you're going to end up getting water when you need heavy water. You don't want water. You want heavy water. Okay, so if you didn't make a mistake like me, all of your pumps should be empty. <laughs> and you're going to take your filter upgrades and you're going to apply one to each of your pumps. Alright, so after you've placed your water underneath the pumps, you should start getting heavy water. And I'm probably going to end up putting speed upgrades on all of these just so that they pump a lot faster. So you can feel free to do that yourself, but that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> now you're going to take your electrolytic separator and it's going to go in like so. And it's going to start making your do 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 so now you're going to use a pressurized tube and put it in one of the input valves. If you look into the controller, you can go to fuel and you can see that the deuterium is in there. Now let's make our tritium. Tritium. So I'm going to save the cables and just use a quantum entangle porter 
and uh, put one over there and one over here. Okay, so uh, you gotta make sure that the uh, liquid lithium is being converted into lithium first, and then I have it feeding into this quantum entangler porter, setting it to a frequency of seven, uh, as you can see, and I have it coming out of here into the solar neutron activator getting our tritium okay so now we have our tritium going in i believe there's like a greenish hue in there there's a greenish hue let's check out our controller here and we do have our tritium all right so that's good so we have our fuel mostly there is another piece of the puzzle missing and we're going to do that right now all right, so we're going to take our chemical infuser. We're going to make sure that our input one is coming in from the left and make sure you're on the gases tab. And then input two is on the right. And then we also have to make sure that our electrolytic separator is also set to the correct one as well. And we want to go to gases and output one, which is on the left hand side. So we're going to take our chemical infuser. Boom. Plop it on down, and we're getting our DT fuel. Now, I don't think we need much. Uh, I think we only need like 10 millibuckets worth. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our whole rum, put this into the plus right here with it fully filling it up, and then we're going to put our whole rum right here in the center. Okay? All right, so you follow one along. You got that. You got that. Now, I detached the ender gate that was under here because it is currently at 493 MFE, and we only need 400. All right, guys, I'm pretty sure that we are all set to go. Um, Yeah, we have everything powered that needs powered. All right, so this is what you're going to do, okay? So once you got your water in... You got your trash set up. You got your energy output ready. And I'll show you what I did with that after I start it up. All right. So all we have to do is go in here with our 493 MFE that we got in here. And we're going to start it up. Guys, we did it successfully. It's beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, here's our heat. We got our plasma. We got our case. And these will both probably fill all the way up to the top, but it won't matter. It can't explode from that. Uh, it's currently going up in power, which is good. Uh, so just so you know that it will consume your whole room. So if you do have to like reboot it or anything like that, you're going to have to make another one of those, which is not a big deal. They're relatively cheap. All right. It is all set up and ready to go. So I tried to increase the tritium production here because it kept decreasing. If you look at the tube and you shift on it, if you shift and look at the tube, uh, it'll tell you exactly how much is in there and whether it's decreasing or increasing like when the numbers are going up or down and it, it kept going down and I was like what the heck I I was trying to figure out how to keep it level while producing enough so you can actually what you can do is you can go in here go into fuel and you can change your injection rate it starts off at two you can change it to whatever you want um, as long as you have enough fuel going in now I have water going into this thing, but you don't even have to worry about that. It is seriously not even a necessity. So what I ended up doing was I made another thermal evaporation plant. And so that way I just have a whole plant by itself without like the crystallizer that I had over here interfering with the tritium production that I have going on over here. I made two solar neutron activators. I wanted this to produce pretty well, so I just wanted a lot of power, you know? And the fact that I have it at 30 right now and I don't have either of these going down on me. Hey guys, editing took here. I kind of left the little thing out. So one of the ways that I got my tritium production up is even though I have these advanced solar generators on top of this guy and it's producing heat, it wasn't producing enough heat. And I can still produce some more heat and have it produce more tritium. But I added these guys, these resistive heaters. You can power them and it'll create heat and then it'll output the heat. And then you put, you input it into a thermal evaporation valve and uh, yeah, it'll heat it up. I might add some more so I can produce some more, have some more power. I mean, why not? Uh, I The way that I'm powering it is kind of weird i don't know why i did this but i did and i just took some thermo generators 
Just some blazing thermo generate. It doesn't require a whole lot of power to get this working. Back to the regular schedule program. So I have a quantum tangle entangle porter right here. Uh, feeding the energy in then I have this induction matrix here and I just have some basic energy going in there it is full so I'll probably put some more in there but you can just uh, like I'll just oh you can actually go in here and change this and whatnot I'm probably gonna end up increasing the capacity that this thing can hold um, you can change it by changing the blocks so you got your basic you got your advanced, you got your elite, pretty much like everything else in mechanism. You have your ultimate, yada, yada, yada. So make, I don't know, what, six of these. You can make eight of them and then make uh, one uh, provider and then it'll just work perfectly fine. Uh, you can keep adding more. You could probably fill up this whole inside here. You can make these bigger than this. I, I just made mine kind of small because I just don't really think it's necessary. But... I'm producing quite a bit of power, so I'll probably change that. And I'll do that between episodes. I'm not going to really worry about it. If you want to know how I did this and how I made this and you want me to do a step-by-step, -step, just let me know in the comments and I'll take care of that. And um, yeah, so this is actually where we're going to make the SPS, the Super Critical Phase Shifter. Pretty cool name, I would say. But we're going to have to do that in the next episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to know how to get lithium, just check out my previous episode. It'll be on the left-hand side. And then on the right, I actually have the ATM8 series, the playlist. I have shorts in there. I have everything that I have learned so far in the ATM8 world. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, go ahead, scroll down a little bit right next to my name. You can hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that like button too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.